Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and uh, welcome to a major press conference. But before we get started, you know, on behalf of uh, Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing, DAZN, Sky Sports, Ring Magazine, Debella Entertainment, the WBSS, I just want to express all of our condolences and, and just heartbreak for Patrick Day. And uh, words just can't tell us how, how gutted everyone is over this tragedy and our, our heartfelt condolences to his uh, family. And uh, rest in peace, Patrick. So in his honor, we'll continue and uh, go on with what we have coming up this Saturday. So ladies and gentlemen, Saturday night at the O2 Arena here in London, another great evening of world-class professional boxing, all brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing, and culminating with a super, super card that night, culminating with a spectacular uh, event for the WBSS, the World Boxing Super Series. You can see the Muhammad Ali Trophy here. That contest will be a combined, unified, two world champions fighting each other, one of those rare moments that we have when two world champions get in the ring, put their titles on the line, and this time it'll be for the WBSS, the World Boxing Super Series, unification of world titles for the Muhammad Ali Championship Trophy over here. So here to get things started, representing the WBSS, here is Mr. Kala Sauerland. Uh, Good afternoon, London. It's great to be here. This is it. This is the final, the super lightweight final for the Muhammad Ali Trophy. Very honored to be sitting up here with two great athletes, warriors, fighters, fighting for the greatest prize in boxing. The, the real winner, uh, the winner of this will be the best man in that division. We saw it in season one with Uzik, we saw it in season one with Callum Smith, and these guys have got here not because we put them together in a great fight, they got here because they fought the best to be in the final, and on Saturday we will see the best versus the best to find out who the man to beat at this weight class is. In a day and age of so many titles and so many confusions in this sport, it's nice to have a simplistic, a simplistic and not too complicated system of a quarterfinal, a semi-final, and a final. We've had some dramatic fights up to this point. We've had, a, we've had great semi-finals with both Progress and Taylor becoming world champions, and now we have it here on Saturday in what we believe is one of the best stages on, in world boxing, having seen so many great fights here over the years at the O2. And, you know, Saturday night is about the best versus the best. I said it before, the caviar of boxing. Um, these guys have put it all on the line for us. They didn't need to go into this tournament. There was plenty of opportunities outside the tournament, but they wanted to put their nuts on the line. They wanted to go into this and show us that they want it. Progress, great credit to him that he's here. Great credit to Taylor that he's here. They fought the best, and we're looking very forward to seeing the Champions League final of boxing on Saturday night. And it's, uh, it's great to be in London. It's great to be working with, uh, with Matchroom, with Eddie, with Sky, to put it on this thing, uh, on, this, on, this, on this platform. Uh, and also, of course, our partners, the Zone in the US. Um, with that, over to you, Eddie. Thank you, Keller. And uh, thank you for bringing this event to London, to the UK. It's quite a unique setup to team up with a Matchroom card, a Sky Sports box officer card, but it's worked so well. I mean, what a card on Saturday night, obviously. You know, the likes of Conor Ben, um, Lawrence Acoli going for the European title against Yves Ngarbu with Shane McGuigan in his corner. Brilliant domestic battle with Ricky Burns against Lee Selby. Mouth-watering heavyweight clash between Derek Chisora and David Price. And then headlined by this amazing fight. You know, one of the great things about the World Boxing Super Series is not only are we getting the best versus the best, but we're getting it very quickly. You know, I have to be honest, if I was promoting... Josh Taylor, after that great win in Glasgow, I would have probably taken a couple of easy defences. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind saying it. But the great thing about the tournament for the fans is that doesn't happen. They go straight into a unification match. I think the best fight in the 140-pound division. Both these guys coming off stunning wins. You know, Regis looked great um, in his win over Kirill Relic. And I was up in Scotland, uh, lucky enough to see Josh Taylor's great performance against Barancic winning the IBF world title. Of course... 
the Ali Trophy on the line, but also the two World Championship belts of both men and the vacant Ring Magazine belt as well. So whether you feel that the World Championships or the Ali Trophy or the Ring Magazine belts carry the most weight in boxing, they're all on the line in this one. So everyone should be happy that we're getting the best versus the very best of the two guys. And, you know, I've not got any association with them. So I get to sit there as a fan and just watch a brilliant fight. Regis Progress is a guy that's been talked about in the States for a long, long time. Lou DiBella has been blowing the horn of Regis Progress. Incredible story from New Orleans. We know he's extremely popular out there. And Josh Taylor, who, again, has gone sometimes quietly on his route to the top and just exploded onto the scene with brilliant world-class performances. I really believe that both guys have an opportunity to become standout stars on Saturday night at the O2. We're going to have over 15,000 people packed into the arena. The atmosphere is going to be incredible. Of course, as always, we're live and exclusive on Sky Sports and Sky Sports box office on Saturday. We thank our partners, DAZN, in the States. And to these two, I just wish you the very best. Two great guys. We want to thank Regis and his team for coming over three weeks early. The amount of media you've done is incredible. Thanks to Sam and Peter Berg and all their team. And, of course, thanks to Josh, uh, Shane McGuigan, Cyclone as well. Great job. Great fight. I can't see anything but this being a fight of the year contender. We've been lucky enough to have two fight of the year contenders already in October with Gennady Golovkin and Sergei Derevenchenko and then Lewis Ritz and Robbie Davis in Newcastle next week. This can only be a fight of the year contender and we can't wait on Saturday night. I'm going to pass over to our broadcast partner, head of boxing for Sky Sports, Adam Smith. Thanks, Eddie. I echo your words and Callers as well. It's wonderful to have these two fighting at the O2. It's a perfect finale to uh, what's been an incredible series. And as you mentioned, Calais, about Callum Smith and Alexander Rusik, look at their positions now in, in world boxing. Uh, the winner of this on, on Saturday, and, and who can pick who it will be, is going to be in a phenomenal position. I think Josh Taylor and uh, Regis Progress are there. They're wonderful fighters, and uh, I, I agree with Eddie. I thank their teams for, for making this happen, making it so easy for us. Tip top, terrific night from, from uh, the, the card at the, uh, right at, down at the bottom all the way through, some wonderful fights, and we'll talk about that in the other press conference. But I want to bring uh, Regis's team in. First, uh, my good friend uh, Lou DeBella, our thoughts, like Michael said, are with uh, the family and, and you guys and the friends of, of Patrick Day. Terrible, terrible news. I know it's been a really tough week for you, so it's good to see you here. I know you're, you're very excited about Regis, but it's been a, a difficult one for you. Um, to, to deal with. You know, uh, when you see something like happened to Patrick Day happen, you realize um, just how much we have to appreciate the men and women that walk into that ring for our entertainment and the risks they take um, to entertain us. And a perfect example of, of that, one of the best examples is coming this Saturday night when literally the two best 140 pounders in the world are going to meet in the final of the World Boxing Super Series. And um, I have nothing but respect for Josh Taylor. You're not going to hear me say a negative word about his, he or his team. I've long believed that the two best 40 pounders in the world are Regis and Josh. I think on Saturday night, Regis is going to prove that he is the number one 40 pounder in the world, and Josh is number two. Um, Josh's team feels differently, and time will tell. Um, at this moment in time, it's hard for me to to be as enthusiastic as I might otherwise be, but I'll tell you that I am expecting a great sporting event, a great boxing match, and the best of what our sport can offer on Saturday night. And my greatest wish for, wish for both these guys, other than for a Regis Progray win, which I do anticipate, but my greatest wish is that they both leave after a great effort where they gave everything they have and they go home healthy to their families. And um, that's what it's all about. I want to thank Regis for being here for the last three weeks. I think that he has a tremendous sense of history and of our sport and it's you know if you follow boxing you realize it's becoming like for an American fighter to fight in the O2 is a little bit the way it's been for a British fighter to fight at Madison Square Garden or in Las Vegas. Um, it's a big deal to headline a, a fight in the O2 and, and Regis is now going to do that. He's understood the importance of that. His team Sam Peter Berg and the management team, um, his great corner, the, the great teacher and trainer Bobby Benton, who's in the audience, one of the best trainers, young trainers in all of boxing. Um, he's got a great team. He's ready for this fight. I know Josh is. Let's get it on on Saturday night. Let's have a great event, a great fight, and let's go healthy home to our families. Yeah, very well said, Lee. Very, very well said. And, and our thoughts are with Patrick's family 
uh, over this weekend, of course. Sam, you've been with uh, Regis a long time. I know you've believed in him so much. As, as we've heard, he's been over here for three weeks. Um, I think a 12-man team, everything so professional, no stone left unturned. Reminds me a bit when Errol Spence came over and, and boxed Kelbrook, came nice and early, got accustomed. Is he as, as, as right as you've ever seen him? Yeah, of course. And I want to thank everybody for being so uh, courteous to us here and uh, making us feel at home. I want to thank our whole team for the past eight weeks of camp, from training to PR to marketing, all done a tremendous job. And most importantly, Regis. Regis embraced it, done everything we asked him to do, and, uh, and uh, loves, loved doing every single one of them. He loves the UK fans, and we've been promoting this fight, feeling like we're at home. Um, now we're two days away. We're excited. We can't wait. Um, two days, you'll see, the whole world will see his talents. So October 26th, buy the pay-per-view. Come, there's tickets left, go buy them. You're about to see a man continue to build his legacy, and this fight is part of his legacy. Thanks, Sam. We'll come to Regis in a minute. I just want to go to the other side of the table. Shane McGuigan, one of our best trainers, uh, no doubt about that. Um, how excited are you? Finally, it's come to it. You've, you've got through the tournament. This is the big one. This is where uh, I guess you believe Josh Taylor becomes a superstar on Saturday night. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's uh, it's a pinnacle of boxing, isn't it? It's two world champions boxing each other for a unified title on Sky Sports box office at the O2 Arena. It's it's something that, as Eddie mentioned, that you know Josh has kind of gone under the radar and bounced on the scene. And but you know we've spent four years working behind closed doors with Josh Taylor building him up, making sure that he's prepped and ready for this occasion. And, you know, camp has gone brilliantly. Everyone always says that, but it really has gone brilliantly. I think the extension gave us a little longer uh, time. You know, I, I know that they've just mentioned that they've been in camp for eight weeks, but we've been in camp for a lot longer than that. And um, he's razor sharp and he's ready for, for whatever progress um, you know, brings to the table. I think you see the best in Josh Taylor whenever he's up against it. And he's definitely up against it on Saturday night. Um, Progate is a good puncher. He's got very good distance control. Um, and, you know, they're raving about him in the States, but, you know, I know my man's going to win. I know he's going to win, and I think I don't believe it's going to go the distance. Won't go the distance. Interesting. You've worked with some wonderful fighters. Uh, it's difficult to compare, of course, the likes of David Hay, Carl Frampton, George Groves. You've got obviously working with Lawrence now. There's so many you've trained over the years, but. What, what is it about Josh that's different talent-wise? He's just a complete fighter. Um, you know, he can punch in combinations. He's, he's equally as good at distance as he is on the, on, on the inside. And I think that's something that um, hasn't, you haven't had a chance to see that, really. You, know, you, you see him up against the puncher in Ahara Davies, and he just, he just dismantled him. Um, and then you see him against someone that's an attritional fighter like Baranchek, and he's had to... He's had to grit it out and, and make it a war. And um, I think it's just he can just adapt to whoever's in front of him. Um, and I think that's why he's such a special fighter. And that's why, you know, on Saturday night, people are going to sit back and realize this guy's a, not just a superstar in, in England, but he's going to be a superstar worldwide because he's, he's going to beat them all. He had a wonderful amateur career. He's unbeaten in, in just 15 fights. It's, it doesn't seem that many, actually. But you believe he can stop Regis on Saturday night. You're that confident? I believe, you know, that both of them have the power to, to hurt each other. But, um, you know, I just know that, that, that technically this fight lies with us. You know, Progress is a wide puncher. Um, and I just, I just see my man stopping him. Regis, let's get straight over to you. Shane McGuigan believes you'll be stopped for the first time on Saturday night. Your record's 24 fights, 24 wins, 20 knockouts. Everyone's talking about you stateside. Are you that good? I think so. <laughs> I definitely think so. Look at my record. You know, um, all my fights, I'm versatile. That's the, that's the, I think that's the biggest difference about me is that I'm more versatile. I can do so many different things in the ring. Um, I mean, you, you look at my last 10 fights, and most of them, all of them look different, you know. Um, some people, you, can, you probably can look at me and try to study me and all that stuff, but it's always a difference when you get in the ring with me. When you can't touch me, and then when I hit you and I hurt you, you know, that's it. But, of course, I respect them, and I'm expecting the best Josh Taylor. For me, none of my 24 fights matter. None of his 15 fights matter. The only thing matters, as far as legacy-wise, is this fight right here, you know, so... That's, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking forward to it. I'm just, I can't wait. I would say welcome to the UK, but you've been here 
three weeks. You've done loads of media. You've done loads of training. How have you enjoyed it? Is it obviously you believe it's the right decision to come nice and early and get accustomed to to what we have to offer, including the weather? (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, the weather was, you know, I live in L.A. now, so it's it's a little getting adjusted. It's a little something getting adjusted to the weather. But I mean, the UK fans been kind. Of, they've been embracing me. I feel like I'm home. To be honest, like I've everybody. I'm on the street, walking in the malls and stuff. People coming up to me, taking pictures and all that stuff. So I feel like it, I'm normal. I'm a I'm a home fighter or something. You know, of course it'll be different in the O2. But right now I'm comfortable. That's the main reason I came over here is just to be comfortable, and that's what I feel. I just feel all comfort right now. So. Um, and in the three weeks was, you know, it was a it was a great thing for me to come over here for three weeks because I got adjusted to the time, the weather, the food, the culture, the people, everything. And so, like I said, now I'm I'm very comfortable here, and that's the main reason I came, just to be comfortable, and that's what I feel, all comfort. You've got a great backstory, you've got a great personality, but it all goes out of the window Saturday night. It's all about what happens in the ring. How highly do you rate Josh Taylor? Do you believe he's every bit as good as you in some departments? Um, I don't think he's better than me in nothing, but he's good. I feel like I always felt like that, you know. I, I, when, the, when the parents, when we had the parents, I felt like it was going to be me and, me and him. And even before the tournament started, I felt like, Josh Taylor is the best in the world at 140 pounds after me, and I'm going to prove it on Saturday. It's still, it's not going to, I feel like this fight, it won't change nothing. Do you think he does anything better than you? Nah, no. Um, he's, he's taller, he's longer, and, and like I've been saying, you know, even if he has, he is taller, that's a fact. He is longer than me, that's a fact. Does he hit harder? Okay, maybe, maybe not. Um, is he faster? Okay, maybe, maybe not. Does he have a better chin? Maybe, maybe not. But even if he had all those things, at all those advantages over me, I still think he can't beat me. That's how confident I am in myself because you can have all that stuff and I still feel like the tail of the tape never matter. You can have all that stuff, right? That, that don't matter. Only thing matter is this, this here and this here and the heart and the, the boxing IQ and I feel like mine is, is just so high. I feel like I can, I can do anything in the ring. I can do so many different things. I'm so versatile in the ring and I think that'll be, you know, that'll be the difference. You heard Shane. He said his man is the complete fighter. What are the weaknesses, though? Um, he gets hit. That's the main thing. Josh has been hurt. We saw it. He's been hurt against Baranchek. He's been hurt against Postal. Um, none of those those fighters are not punchers like me. None of they're not sharp like me. They're not fast like me. They're not crisp like me, and they don't have the timing like I do. So. Um, if he got hurt from those fighters, then just imagine what's gonna happen with me. But even saying that, even with me saying that. I'm still not banking on that. Like, I don't, I'm not, I, I expect Josh to be way better than he was with Postal. I expect him to be way better than he was with, with Baranchek because that's what I, ex, I expect them to do. After the fight in Scotland, I went and, and I told him, I said, look, you can't get hit like that by me because he had a big gash over his eye from Baranchek. I said, look, you can't, you can't do that same thing with me because if you do that, if you get hit with those same punches by me, you're going to get hurt way more than you was with Baranchek. So um, I, I expected, him and his team to go in the gym and work on those things and that's and that's what I think they did they went and they worked on those things worked on defense worked on everything they need to work on so I'm not even like I said I'm not even um expecting him to be the same fighter he was against those fighters I'm not worried about that like I don't study fighters I don't that's just not what I do I fight the person that's going to be in front of me when I fight them I'm not I'm not going on your past I'm only going on the present Let's flip it over straight away to Josh. Uh, your thoughts to what Regis was saying there, first off? I was, didn't think he was going to stop talking there. <laughs> Fuck me, you can talk. Um, no, I, that's, listen, it's all smoking wind. Um, I, I'm going in there to do a job on Saturday. I really believe I can lay him out cold on Saturday. And um, I just want to get in there and get it done now. Yeah. You, like Shane, you believe you can knock him out Saturday? 100% I believe I can knock him out, yeah. Yeah. What about what he's saying about the fact you get hit a little too much, that there are weaknesses? Uh, what would your response be to Regis? Well, obviously, every fighter sees, uh, look at, looks at another fighter and sees Chinks, thinks that he's Chinks. So, yeah, he's going to have thoughts that he thinks he's going to win and going to do whatever, but um, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen on Saturday. I'm going in there to do a job. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. Um, switched on. I know he's a good fighter. He's a world champion. So... All these belts on the line um, is going to bring the best out of me. So, yeah, he's going to he's going to get it on Saturday night. Yeah. 
I'll ask you the same question. Do you think he does anything better than you do in the ring? No, I don't think he does anything better than me. No, he's got um, he's got good timing. He's got good movement, good good head movement. But again, he's had 24 fights, 24 wins against nobody. Um, he's, he's not for anybody. He's not for anybody that's been in there to, to win and go in there to hurt him and go in there to to rip his belts off him. He's not fought against any real live opponents um, who's hungry like him and wants more success. So he's in for um, a hard night on Saturday. He can't like hurt nobody if he can't touch them. Of course people want to hurt me. Of course I'm my fighters be want to touching you, to I'm going to be They want to. You. They want to try to hit me, but they can't. Of course you think people try to, they come in there and lose. They don't come in there and lose. They come in to try to beat me up. That's what we signed a contract for. We come in to beat the other Party person record. up. But they couldn't. Party that's, the all, that's the difference. Party record against bin men or something like that. Uh, what? I don't understand what you're saying. I know you don't understand. I know you don't understand. Take your glasses off. You're inside, you fucking wanker. I'll take them off with the face off. I'll take Listen them off with the face off. you got your sunglasses on. Take them off. I'll take them off with the face off. Josh, do you think that your experience as an amateur, you're a wonderful uh, pedigree that you, you bring to the ring, and also your size in this fight? You're a slight betting underdog, I was told yesterday. Do you think that helps you in this fight, your size and your experience, if you are both as skilled as each other? Yeah, I've got less experience in terms of numbers of fights, but I believe I've got more experience. Um, I've fought the better opposition. I've had a great amateur career. I've been all over the world. I've seen every kind of style has been thrown at me. So I believe I've got the better experience, more experience, and uh, yeah, I just feel I feel ready. Yeah. And there's there's a bit of needle here, isn't there? There has been ever since the fight was announced. I'm just ready to fight. I'm just ready to fight. And for you, Regis, is yeah. it just about fighting? Yeah. Just about winning. That's all. We we here for the belts. We here for the money. We that's what we here for. The best and and to prove that. Me, it's not even about that. It's to prove that I'm the best. That's well, that's the main thing. You know, I had a hard, I had a hard upbringing as far as this boxing stuff is concerned, and I always want to prove I'm the best. I always had a chip on my shoulder since I started. You know, I felt like it, it wasn't a lot of people believed in me, and now, you know, I'm here and I feel like I'm still number one. But I always have a chip on my shoulder. I still have to prove something. You well, know, what so. would it mean to you Saturday night if you can win this whole series, the Muhammad Ali Trophy, the number one fighter? at your weight in the world after all you've been through? I mean, it's everything, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a storybook, you know, because, you know, I used to fight for free, you know, as a professional, I was, I used to be fight, I really used to fight for free. And, you know, to, to be where I'm at right now, it's through all hard work and believing in myself and, um, it, you know, it'll be everything. Josh, you've taken accolades in the amateurs. You, you've won your world title already at home. Wonderful scenes, yeah. singing afterwards as well. What will Saturday night mean to you? Is this the, the real launch of you as a star in the sport? I believe so, yeah. Um, I believe this is a, the coming out party. Um, everybody's going to know who I am over here and over in America after this fight, after I've taken care of him on Saturday. Got these belts and, uh, yeah, on to bigger and better things and I can't wait. Finally, Regis, a prediction. What happens Saturday night? I'm going to whoop him. And Josh? Same thing. I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> Let's bring it on, Eddie. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We're going to have a head-to-head -head here, and then uh, they've got the undercard press comments coming up shortly. Thank you. Gray Taylor there, uh, doing battle for the WBA, the IBF in the ring, 140 pound title. A genuine 50-50 fight, Darren, and one that both guys genuinely both believe that they're going to come yeah, out and win. Can, you can hear it in their voices and the words they're saying, they truly believe it. Sometimes you get fighters that go up there and say, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and they have no, no interest in it whatsoever. But with them, you know, they truly believe they're number one. And uh, for me, it's just going to translate in the ring on fight night on Saturday. It's going to be fireworks. I've no doubt. Um, it's a real pick'em. It is a real pick'em. You got, you know, the, ex the experience. You could say a progress, that the power. But I don't know. I've been so impressed with Taylor. It, it's a tough one to call. It really is. Forget he took Victor Postle. I think it was only in his 13th contest, and a lot of people were saying then 
you know, is this a little bit too soon? Mm. It wasn't all that long ago that he was in with O'Hara Davis, yeah. and and you know that that seemed like his first kind of step up, really domestic level crossroads fight. He breathed through that, and then of course it was Postol, and um, of course his rise through the Super Series ranks with, with Baranchik and, and Kirill Relic as well have been something very very special. You could argue he's had the more <laughs> difficult route in in the Super the Series, or it could be that um, Pro Gray has made the opponents he's had just look that easy. And I guess that's what it's all about. It's these variables. It's the un Knowns, um, two southpaws, there are the three belts, and of course the Muhammad Ali trophy uh, on the line on Saturday night live on Sky Sports. It's just such an intriguing fight, such an interesting fight. Big size difference as well there, there Darren, is. though. And I, I, you know what? And I think, sorry, Matt, I think that's what Taylor will try and use early on. Mm. I think we'll try and use them advantages because they are, if, you use, if they're used correctly, you know, get them on the end of the jab, move. Uh, he can move really well. It looks When he gets into a rhythm, well, to be fair, both when they get into rhythms, they're, they're, they're a pleasure to watch, honestly, they really are. But for me, Taylor gets into rhythm really quickly, and when he does, it's hard to get him out of that. He flows nice, he gets, works well behind the jab, mix it up, the variation that he shows it is tremendous. And for me, you know, though Progress seems to think he's got the better IQ, I don't, I think Taylor does. And though I think both men believe they can stop each other, I, I don't think that will happen. I, if you uh, if I'm going to give you uh, a prediction now, I'm going Taylor points. Are you? Okay, yeah. so it's going to be uh, it's going to be close. Ta in, in a gr in a great fight, absolutely. It's it's not going to be wide. I don't think one way or the other. It looks no. like it could even go to something like a split decision, a majority decision. Um, could be really about what you like, who has their spots at what times in the fights. And uh, well, Taylor having a little bit of a laugh, and Prograde just doesn't want to really engage in that because he'll keep in that poker face. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, let me say welcome to the press conference here. As you all know, Saturday night at the O2 Arena here in London, another great night of world class professional boxing brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing. And. I'm looking at all these guys behind me and young ladies, and it's really, really an impressive lineup. It's gonna be one of those nights that fight fans dream about. A really, really outstanding card. I know sometimes it almost sounds like it's redundant. Yeah, Michael Buffer's up here talking about how great the card is, but just look behind me and you can see how good it's gonna be Saturday night. So here to tell us more about it, and to present a lot of these people that we've kind of like, their microphone was open and we were listening to them all talking to each other. That was great, good stuff, but I don't know if anybody caught that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's Mr. Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing. Connor Ben, I think widely regarded as one of the top young fighters in the country right now, already found himself in the top 15 of the WBA 147 pound rankings as a replacement opponent, but a very, very good one in Steve Jamoy, just coming off a big win against a 17 and 0 prospect who many regarded as a top young talent coming through. He gets a chance to take on another great young prospect now in Connor Ben. Connor, welcome. Um, talking to the O2, it's probably like home for you, but good to be back and, and a solid test for you on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, I would say the O2 starting to feel like home, but the O2 is home for me. I mean, yeah, my debut here, I won my WBA title here. And, you know, reception I get here at the O2 is crazy. I mean, it's, you know, and, uh, it's a blessing to be on such a big show. I mean, this is the show for me for the, of the year. Um, and, you know, I plan on showing everyone this fight again, what I'm made of. Each fight's been something different. My fight before my last, I boxed. My last fight was a little bit rocky, fancied it. And, you know, I got him out of there. And, you know, if this guy comes for it, he's going he's gonna to get banged out too. So it really, really don't bother me. If he wants to box on the back foot, you know, I'll take it to him. So at the end of the day, I'm a fighter through and through. And I fight with my heart on my sleeve. And... You know what to expect when I jump in them, when in that ropes, in them ring. One thing that's unique for you in this camp is obviously you're in camp with your old man, which is which has been uh, definitely one that you haven't seen many year, many times over the years in boxing. What's that experience been like, and obviously spurring each other on for your upcoming fights? Oh, I mean, it's crazy. Um, he's just mad, isn't he? <laughs> like he really is. Like, but I see so many similarities in us too. You know, like I said the other day, like I was looking for the remote for ages and I was like, where's the remote? Where's the remote? Going, having a guy, at everybody. And it's in my back pocket. And I remember my dad used to do that. And I think, oh, mate, what's the matter with you? Like, the remote's in your back pocket. And, you know, I see so many similarities. But, you know, one thing I do pray is that, you know, he's given, it, God gives me that power, you know, that he had, you know, the ability to hit a man clean and he ain't getting up. And, 
you know, we'll see. I mean, I'm only 23, and uh, if God's given me that, I'll be well happy with him. <laughs> Thanks, Guy. I look forward to Ben against Jamoy, WBA International Welterweight Championship on Saturday night. One card that I think is just a brilliant, brilliant fight is the European Cruiserweight fight between Lawrence Acoli and the champion Eves and Garbu. I think this is a, a massive opportunity for Lawrence Acoli, someone that's moving so quickly in the professional ranks. Already ranked number two with a WBA, British Commonwealth WBA international champion. Lawrence, we're going to start with you as a challenger, which is quite unique in, in recent times and by far the toughest test of your career so far and looking forward to attempting to become European champion on Saturday night. Um, yes, everyone, thank you for being here. I would first of all say it's not my first time boxing a champion. I beat um, Commonwealth champion to become Commonwealth champ, same with the British. So it's just going to be continuing in that same form, European champion. I've dealt with people who go to sleep every night thinking that this is their time, they're the champion, that there's no way that this guy's going to beat them. And then it's always ended up the exact same way, which is me walking over the victory. So I really do look forward to it. Um, I'm happy that Eve's here, he's taken the fight, do you know what I mean? He said that he wanted it before, and then the weekend is here, so we'll see what's good. Obviously, now had a couple of fights or to mould with Shane McGuigan on enough time now. Been getting in some good work, looked great in the footage we've seen of you so far and expecting an explosive performance on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I'm expecting a very like um, complete performance for myself because I feel like um, my opponent is very like versatile. He can come forward, he can go on the back foot, um, he's solid, so when you land shots, you'll be able to take them well. So I feel like I have to show um, different layers um, at different points of the fight as long as it goes on for. So I look forward to it. Eves, great camp you've had up with Dominic Ingle in Sheffield. Big opportunity for you on a big stage to really get your name out there in a cruiserweight division and obviously going in there defending your belt with pride on Saturday night. Uh, yeah. Uh this is what I wanted uh, when I, I came into the UK. I wanted to fight the number one in the UK. And uh, this is what I got. Uh, I'm going to have the chance to show to the world what, what I can do. And uh, yeah, I'm more, more than ready for it. Uh, two days to go now. Obviously, yeah. you have a, a lot of professional experience. Uh, Lawrence, not many fights as a pro, but move very quickly. You see this is the toughest test of your career on Saturday night? Well, I, I don't know. This is something we're going to see in two days. Uh, I wanted to move to the world level uh, after my last fight. But uh, this is now the things that I have to do. I have to show me to the world. And now I'm going to have the chance to do that. And uh, in two days, we will see. Thank you. Eves and Garbu against Lawrence Akoli, European Cruiserweight Championship. This next fight has got everybody talking. Two of the greatest ambassadors of the sport for UK boxing for a long, long time. Ricky Burns against Lee Selby. I think this is a brilliant fight. Two great guys, two great fighters. Of course, Lee Selby, former world featherweight champion. Ricky Burns, three-weight world champion. Lee, going to start with you. Um, the O2, been good to you. Many great wins here. Of course, you captured the world title here as well. This is a fight that everybody's talking about. Must win for both guys. You had a good camp. I bet it's much easier for you at 135 than it was at 126. Feeling ready to go? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. But back at the O2, I've, I've boxed at the O2 more than any, any other venue in, in my career. I won the Lonsdale belt out right there. Won and defended the world title. So I've got, I've got great memories there. We, um, we started sparring quite, quite, a while, quite a while back out, out in Los Angeles. And whilst I was out there, the, the, the date of the fight was, was put back. So I, I, took, a, I took, a, took a week away with, with, with my family and the, kit and the, and the kids. Got back to work. We've been we've been up in up in Newcastle sparring with um, Lewis Whitson, and then he come down and, and did a week a week down in Bristol. So everything everything's gone good, and I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Obviously, you've shared the ring before in sparring. You know about Ricky Burns, his work rate, obviously yep. his ability as well. Expecting a high pace fight at the O2 Arena. I'm expecting a, an extremely tough fight. Ricky Burns is is very experienced. He's a good boxer. You, you can't get a tougher man. You, you've seen him box off a full fight with a broken jaw. He's an extremely tough man, very durable, very skilled. And um, yeah, I'm expecting a tough fight. For you, do you feel this is must win for your career? Certainly, I think Ricky Burns acknowledges that as well. But yeah. at this stage, obviously, you want to get back challenging for world titles at lightweight. This is a must win fight for Lee Selby. Well, realistically, for, for, for both of us, if, if, 
if we intend on like challenging for war titles again, we have to win this fight. The, the loser is it's, it's going to be difficult for the loser to to come back and box at this level again. But um, I I think it'd be more difficult for for Ricky Burns to come back as he, as he's a little bit older than, than I am. But again, if if I lost this fight, it will be it will be a, a challenge to get back in in like title contention. Thank you, Lee. Ricky, call you the Benjamin Button of boxing. You seem to be getting younger as as the years go on. You seem to be training harder as the years go on. Still caning all the boys in the gym, beating all their times. And this is what this is what you love. This is what you love to do, the big fights, the big occasions. And this has been a fight for a long time that you can really get your teeth into. I know, Joe, I'm just so happy. We're just a couple of days away now. Um, you know, these are the, the big nights like this, um, especially at the O2. I've never boxed here before, but I'm so looking forward to it. Um, these are the big shows that I've always said that I love to be involved in. Um, I, I, we know that we've got a, a tough fight here against Lee, but um, preparation and that's went well. Everything's going to plan for this fight, and um, we're confident in going out here and getting the win. Obviously, you boxed at 140, you won a world championship there. You're coming back to 135, which you have done for the last three fights. He's coming up from featherweight. Do you expect your size and your strength and your work rate to be a, a factor in this fight? Um, I, I'm not really going to look into that too much. Um, I can always remember back when we did spar. Um, I couldn't believe the size of him for a featherweight. Um, I kept saying to him, uh, how do you do it? And he kept saying, make it easy. But you know, that's just a boxer. They'll tell you to make the weight easy. But um, nah, I'm not going to look into that that much. Um, I know what I need to do. Um, we know what to expect. Um, so like I said, all the preparations went well. And we're just looking forward to getting out and putting on a show. We can't wait for it. Burns against Selby. Expect a 12-round thriller at the O2 on Saturday night. Now we move to the main event, a fight that everybody's talking about. You know, this boxing game is crazy in that with four weeks to go, three and a half weeks to go, you've got a guy who gets a spider bite or whatever happens, and all of a sudden Derek Chisora needs a new opponent. And uh, before I speak to both guys, um, David Price, I expect a nice conversation with Derek, I'm not too sure, but I just want to bring in David Hay. I have to say, I know... We've had our spats over the past, but thank you for, for your work on this. Thank you for the way you acted with speed, with Derek, to, to make this fight. Of course, thank you for David Price as well, who stepped in to look at this opportunity. But David, a chat about the fight itself, about your charge as well, and, and the ever-changing landscape of professional boxing. Yeah, we've, you know, when the first, uh, when news broke that Parker, unfortunately, would be unable to get in the ring due to a snake bite, or was it a, a spider bite um you know i thought damn you know this this is going to be difficult to get an opponent which will get derek chisora up in the morning you know he need derek needs someone on the opposite side of the court opposite side of the ring who brings out the best in him if the opponent would have been under par derek may have swerved a few sessions here and there or maybe have Eaten, eaten something he shouldn't have been eating. Um, but, you know, David Price is, is a weapon. He's just look at the size of him. I've sparred with him probably 100 rounds over the years. And I know firsthand that there's genuine world-class power. And I'm not exaggerating. I'd say David, David Price is the second hardest person I've been hit by behind Deontay Wilder. You know, and that's with, you know, 18-ounce gloves on with a head guard. You know, so I know, I've, and I've, and I've relayed this to... To Derek as well, David Price is no joke. And there's one thing taking a fight against someone on, on shortish notice. He was probably, was at four weeks he had? You know, but he was already in preparation for a fight in, in November. So he was in training. And when a fighter has nothing to lose, they're very dangerous. You know, many people sort of turn, uh, heard when um, Gerald Miller wasn't able to fight and uh, Andrew Riz Jr. popped up. Everyone's like, ah, he's only had a four or five weeks notice, what, look at the state of him, he's not going to bring nothing to the table. We saw what happened there. You cannot underestimate any heavyweight. And fortunately, Derek hasn't underestimated um, the change of opponent and he's, he's pushed it in the gym. Ruben Tabaras and all the guys at London Shoot Fighters have made sure that he's 12 round fit. And it's not just 12 rounds of plodding through. He's going to set a pace from the first round it's no secret what he's going to do. He's going to use his fitness. He's going to use his just newfound fitness that he has, head work, body work. He's going to really bring it. And the fans are in for an absolute 
cracker. So I know, I know David, when the heat's on, he, he lets his hands go. He knows, you know, he wants a 12-round fight. He wants a 12-round boxing match, keeping it long. We can't allow this fight to become a long-range boxing match with someone who's an Olympic Spronda medalist, someone who's got probably six or seven inches in arm length on Derek Chisora. So Derek Chisora needs to close that pace, close that range, and put, put the heat on from the very first bell, which, which, as I said, just keeps everybody on the edge of their seats. And th this fight is going to be an absolute barn. So, and both fighters know if, if they win this fight, Chisora and Price, if they know there's the, the, the world's their rise, the heavyweight division is, is flourishing like, any, like no other time. And, you know, we, we was talking, I saw an interview, we was talking about Usyk. You know, he's, you know he's, he's, he's coming to that heavyweight division now. The WBO title may be out there bouncing around. So the winner of this fight, is, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that the winner of this fight could challenge for um, one of the world title belts. And, you know, to, to, to have said that a year ago, that, you know, the winner of Derek Chisora and David Price could be challenged for a world title. I'm sure people would have put a lot of money that, on that not being the case, but here we are, and it's looking very, very likely. And regardless of the future, this fight on Saturday night is going to be an absolute barnstormer, so do not blink. Thank you, David. Going to go to David Price. David, I bumped into you in Ibiza. This was after the Dave Allen fight, and you said to me, you know, I think I'm just going to come back now and get a, a relatively straightforward win. But two weeks before that, you said, just get me the biggest fight that you possibly can. And we planned for a, a fight on November 23rd in Liverpool. All of a sudden, the phone call came. And after a couple of days of negotiation, it was one that you couldn't turn down. You fancy it. And what a massive opportunity, as David said, for, for one of you guys to move forward and challenge for the World Heavyweight title. Unbelievable, just to echo what David said then, if someone would have told me 12, I've got a text message off you 18 months ago through, through my management, offering me this fight, and I'll show you it after the fight, because it makes me smile how far it's come since then. What, in and, terms and, of the money? Yeah, yeah and, I, I, <laughs> and look, Derek, Derek Chisora has always been a fight that, coming through, when it was coming through, it was like, it's a fight we could do without, you know, when I was unbeaten and everything else, because Derek's a bruiser, Derek, you know, made no secret my admiration and my respect for Derek, but at this stage in my career, it's a no-brainer because the opportunity and, and the upside to it, the, the way I'm feeling emotionally, physically, mentally, it's come at a perfect time for me and um, it, it's just gonna, it, it's just gonna go off on Saturday night, like David Day said. I'm not the type of fighter who's gonna be on the back foot boxing trying to keep Derek just off me long. I'm gonna have to fight fire with fire because he will get close to me. And he will let his hands go. And the only way I can retaliate to that is to let my hands go. So it's just going to make for an exciting fight. I think Adam Smith put a great point forward. How you two never fought each other back in the day was, was quite amazing. But obviously now you get a chance to do it. Do you know what that is? That is, a, that is a shit going to a slaughterhouse. I want to kill this guy. Ah, it's it. I'm going to oh. murder this guy. I oh. swear down. Listen, I don't need to sell anything. You're not in my league. Do you understand? That is you right there. I'm going to duck you down. You don't understand. See, I know Derek needs this to get himself up for the fight. So that, so that sounds because the last thing Derek needs is to be shaking my hands and because... We do like each other. No, no, we and, do and you know, when it's cool, respect, look, respect, you know what? That, that's you fine. Like the man, but this is his business. This is business, yeah. yeah it's hundred percent. I do like the man. He's a good guy. You know, when he wanted to retire, so don't retire. Keep going. You never know what God's gonna give you in front. But this is his business, and I can guarantee you, come on Saturday, when we roll in our when we roll in our ring, I'm coming to sick and destroy. Oh, that's, fine. that's fine. That's fine. But you will you will walk on someone in the process, Derek. I cannot hear you. You will walk in someone in the process of the seeking destroy. And look, it's going to be Listen, a great fight. I am fight happy to walk into one of them, but I'm happy to deliver loads of them. So, yeah. Okay. You know, okay. It is what it is. But I am ready. You know, uh, yeah. it's nothing phases me. You know, I've been, I've, I've boxed, I've not been knocked out, but I can guarantee you, I am ready for whatever you have. You understand? Okay. Whatever you got. I got tripled and you got, you know, understand, I am ready. You know, nothing phases me. I'm gassed, I'm pumped. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving life. You know, life, life is great to me. God is great. 
So all I'm saying to you is just be, be ready when I roll in. That's all I'm saying. Understood. I, I didn't get that. What you say? I said understood. 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 Good man. <laughs> Just Del Boy, just a quick one on that that change of opponent. Obviously, there was there was a little bit of uh, beef with with Parker going in. How was that period of that probably four or five days in, in the change of opponent? Now you know what when when when, uh, when me and Nicole went to Vegas for the gloves were off. Uh, when we sat there, when we left there, uh, I was like in my head, I was like, this guy's definitely gonna pull out. You know, I go back to LA, I was sitting in the hotel, I was like, he's pulling out 100%. But I didn't say that to anybody, because I knew already, I saw the fear in his eyes, you know, and then I come up with an excuse, he's got beat by a spider, so he hasn't been training, his, his blood has got poison in there. I was like, you know, in America, if you get beat by a spider, they give you medication, don't they? You know, and I, you know, when I said in the gloves are off, I told him, you're not hungry anymore, you don't want to fight anymore, you just want to be in there for the show. You know, you're, you're training in Vegas, you don't want to train, you don't want to train, you don't want to fight. So I knew he was going to pull out, and um, I finished, I think I finished sparring, was it 10 rounds afterwards? Yeah. You know, that's when I realized, <laughs> for one second, for I mean, split second, I didn't like him, because he let me spar big rounds, knowing that my fight's been canceled. <laughs> I come back, and then uh, Nico's like, oh, I was like, I'm going now. Nico's like, oh, you have to, uh, David, you have to get Derek. And David was like, for what? I goes, for that thing. I was like, what thing? Oh, oh. And he was like, oh, jo Joseph Parker pulled out. I was like, what? I was like, so you let me spar all those rounds knowing that the guys pulled out. He goes, I just wanted to see what you could do. I was like, ah, oh, then cool. So what's, and he's like, ah, oh, there's a list of names we're sorting out. I was like, ah, oh, then cool, whatever. I'm going home. That was it. People talk about the power of David Price. Obviously, you're hugely experienced. You have to be weary of that, but at the same time, you've got to make David Price work. What, what's, what's the tactics? Listen, Derek? everybody's got power in the boxing game. You know, everybody's got power. It's not about where it is, but he has to be aware of what I can do too. So, uh, you know, um, we're going to come. We're going to bring war. There's only one way we, we know how to fight, and that's war. I can't box. I know how to fight, so I'm going to fight. No chance of this fight going the distance. And there's no chance of me boxing, you know, boxing on the back foot, hitting the jab. Nah, there's no chance of that. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no chance of that. It's just straight run, go, bing, bing, bombs away. You win this fight by knockout? He's getting loaded. He's getting knocked out, yeah. Dave, no distance, no points this time around at the O2. Who knows what's going to happen? Look, boxing, boxing's a funny game. And if I, if I concentrate on what... I'm planning to do on Saturday night. I'm, I'm expecting it to be a long fight and, and a, a painful fight for Derek, to be honest, because the, the punch accuracy that I carry is, is going to be the telling point. Um, but I'm expecting, I'm expecting a knockout win for myself. Cheers, guys, and uh, appreciate the backwards and forwards. One thing I would like to say is I have a huge amount of respect for both of you. You've taken this fight, you've taken the challenges. In 02, on Saturday night, you're going to see a night you will never forget. Well, I don't know if you said out there, boxing is a funny old game. And uh, just with, with Ricky Burns, um, you know, I remember him coming back. I can't remember after the defeat, but he fought then Figueroa out in Texas. And mm. it was like almost like yeah. he was the gatekeeper. Then he went on to win a number one title. So you just don't know. You really don't know. And as long as his body's telling him, we just don't know what's going to happen. And, and I tell you what, this one thing never gets less funny you see guys have to square off against David Price because mm. he is just so much bigger than everybody else in the division. And these are big, big men he's making look very small, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a giant. He's an absolute giant. And uh, I think um, he'll be trying to use his advantages out there. But ultimately, it's going to turn into a slugfest, isn't it? You know, he's going to have to mix fire with fire at times. And 